Hey, everyone. Welcome to Leadership Now with me, Dan Pontefract. Special guest today, Neil Bedwell, who is a strategic marketing leader with over 20 years experience on both agency and client side, running work, teams, businesses in London, Amsterdam, and San Francisco, and as you'll find out, Atlanta now. He calls himself a reformed marketer. Neil, we're going to get into that. He's the founding partner of Local, which is a change marketing company based in Atlanta, bringing consumer-grade agency craft to internal audiences to deliver meaningful organizational change. And we want to really speak to the meaning part there today, Neil. His work uh, includes with a variety of different Fortune 500 companies from Capital One to Coca-Cola, Republic Services, UPS, P&G, Kaiser, and then uh, not only co-founding Local as a digital strategy and content, prior to that, he was in charge of Coca-Cola's Global Content Excellence Group. And check this out. He was, his work included leadership of the digital program for the 2014 FIFA World Cup in Brazil. Now, Neil, uh, you and I got this chance to meet last year, and I was smitten right away. Uh, by you and your demeanor and and how I believe that you're sort of taking this world by storm on what marketing really is. So can you tell me, first of all, is there a relationship between sort of marketing and meaning? And maybe there's the definition of a new type of marketing that you're trying to get to. Wow. Uh, you go straight in with the big questions, don't you, Dan? It's, it's awesome to see you again. Um, uh, always love spending time and, and talking. So yeah, marketing and meaning. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to rewind it a little bit sure. um, and, and say, I think most people don't really know what marketing is, uh, or at least they misunderstand it. Um, and, and I'm going to lump a, a, a bunch of marketing uh, professionals in there too. Uh, and, and I don't mean this in, 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 with any kind of disrespect, but I think we, we tend to over rotate on the output, so the communications output of marketing advertising, you know, so the stuff we see, yeah, uh, and and um, working in agencies, marketing agencies, we focused on that output. Working inside uh, client organizations, we focused on that output. But marketing for me um, is bigger than just what we make. It's actually about um, what I would call orientation. Marketing is the orientation of everything you do around the audience that you're trying to reach, uh, and so um, you can orient service. You can orient product design, you can orient um, logistics, you can orient any of those things, or you can not, you can just say it. And, and I think that um, what our modern world and, and the you know, proliferation of technology and, and our access to all different kinds of information is kind of uncovering is that when we say something over here, but we don't actually live it out in the face-to-face -face interaction over here, mm. that that promise now rings hollow. So. Um, if you take meaning um, at its broad, at its broadest sense, which is actually that um, that it matters and perhaps I care about it, it's not enough to say it. Yeah. That you have to actually do it. And so, our, our standpoint is: well, if you believe in that philosophy of marketing as as audience um, centricity, if you like, then the people who actually engage with the audiences the most, with your customers the most, are your employees. And so employees need to be to have the business orient around them too in order that they live out the promise that you're making so we we treat marketing with that i call it sort of big m capital m marketing yeah. um as central to like a, a philosophical center to how you might actually approach uh anything uh, and so in a sense it it, it has meaning because it, it puts people at the center um and then from there you can pour in whatever purpose or impact that you're, you're then trying to make that delivers on that meaning. But at least the center of it is human beings. Uh, and so that's, that's, that's where we come from. I love that. So, uh, and in the green room, we were talking about this, if you will, and yes. you, you've used this line that I heard you say, I believe on stage. And you said, um, people don't work for companies. Companies are people. And with that, I, I guess where I'm going with meaning and marketing is, I, I believe we we need marketing, and you, you have to have it. And I'm, I'm curious, like why why you believe meaning and marketing have a relationship, and why why is marketing thus essential then to making change in this world through the people that are part of that company? 
Let's see if we can follow that through. And I do remember our green room conversation, but I think I had a guy's hand at my shirt putting a mic on at the time. So I'll, I'll, try, I'll try and blank that bit out. Um, so the, the thought that, um, let's see, reframe what a company is, is actually a historic thing. I mean, um, if you go back to the derivation of the, of the word company, it comes from the Latin and it's to orient through French and into what we, we now take it now. But it actually just means the communion around bread. Um, mm -hmm. And if you think about what that means, it, it's a group of people coming together to make something that they then share, which is kind of wonderful, uh, utopian even. Um, yeah. I don't think that that's how companies really work today. We don't come together to make things that we then share in. Um, the, share, the share part has gotten kind of, kind of lost in there. Um, mm -hmm. And, and also inside of that, the, the different roles that people would play in making that bread, whether they are gat hunting, gathering, farming, you know, or baking, all those things. I think that's got a little lost, but we'll, we can get to that. Um, so the shared endeavor, I think, is where I'm, I'm going with this in, in, in terms of meaning that if the company stands for something, then I also need to believe that I stand for that, that I can stand for that, that I am participatory in delivering what the company stands for. And there are some companies out there that do that fantastically well. Um, and there are some that, again, say, you know, make that promise externally, but don't live it out internally. So um, the, for me, what we, if you take marketing inside, which is what we're, we're focused on, um, it's about unlocking the meaning for employees. There's an interesting stat out there right now, if you take, you know, keep sort of digging in on this thought that um, we, there's probably a billion podcasts now about the, the great resignation, um, which is, right? yeah. yeah, well, maybe, maybe I'm optimistic, but, um, there's a lot of talk about the great resignation. Um, and I don't actually, I don't like that phrase. I actually like the, the, the idea of it being sort of the great reawakening. It's like, we're, it's like, oh, well, there is actually a better way, you know, um, and the, a lot of the research suggests that people aren't leaving because it's about, because I, I get an extra few bucks in my paycheck over there. I'm talking about, you know, the general populace. I'm sure there are a few. But the main reasons people are leaving is because they don't feel valued, mm. either valued by the company or valued um, just as importantly, maybe even more so, by my direct manager, the, the person who, you know, I, I take my direction from on a, on a daily basis. Or, or, and, or worse, don't feel respected and those things. But not feeling valued. Um, people are actually sort of always held captive from the meaning that they create. Um, I always talk about, you know, you, you can see, you know, spending a lot of time with, with companies like UPS. Mm -hmm. a, um, it's maybe easier for a, someone who drives a delivery truck to see the value that they create, right? They take the package off and, they, and, it, and perhaps they're greeted by a homeowner who's been waiting for that package. And there's a little moment there. But um, for a lot of people who work behind the scenes, it's, it's really difficult. If you bash away at an Excel spreadsheet all day or, you know, some kind of database, what does that even do? You know, where, where does that even go? So, and then all the folks that work, you know, outside of that, that direct front line. So for me, it's about helping everybody understand the meaning that they create underneath that shared, un, that shared and understood meaning that the company creates in the world. Uh, and I think you can do that. I think marketing has a power to help do that. Well, it, it dawns on me, uh, maybe because I'm dumb, that actually there's there's two, I guess, paths, perhaps, Neil, uh, to marketing. There's the external path. So, you know, your external brand voice, as you've pointed out before, you know, what the company stands for that customers or clients, partners, suppliers, the public can yeah. look at from the external uh, lens in and say, oh, that's what UPS does and that's what it stands for. But also, there's an internal path, I would imagine. And so if, as you've said, you know, uh, people don't work for companies, companies actually are people, should there not be an alignment of sorts between HR and marketing to help employees see what that organization sense of meaning or purpose actually is internally so that then that fuels and perhaps like spills over into the public domain? Oh, yeah, that's that is. Um... <laughs> that's a, that, that that vision is something that we talk about a lot let's let's um unpack it a little bit so if i think most uh leaders now understand the value of good customer experience mm -hmm. customer experience is that em, you know enveloping term that means yes we can win people but we can also deliver the value that we promise them 
uh, and we can keep them, perhaps retain them. I know loyalty is a is a funny word, and I've heard numerous times from from very senior leaders that loyalty is a myth. But you know, we are trying to create a superior customer experience than the the myriad competition that's available to you know for that customer, so that they keep coming back to us. Right. So, if we believe in customer experience, well, I can. I think you can argue that it, it's the employees that create the customer experience, particularly mm-hmm. those employees that are either in person or, you know, through ha- having a direct, in some kind of direct contact with that customer. And in the o- order for the employees to not do the bare minimum, for not to just show up, but actually to, to deliver, well, they, they have to feel positive about the company too. So employee experience is also important. And you can think about employee experience driving customer experience. And then the positive customer experience actually pulling, uh, driving the employee experience again. And then what you get is this little loop, this infinity loop, this, um, you know, yeah, yeah, flowing from um, customer experience, employee experience to customer experience and then back. So if you're a leader, do you put all your dollars into customer experience or do you break, do you put those dollars, you know, equally perhaps, or at least in a balanced way into both so that you actually are fueling what creates that customer experience in, you know, particularly at that last mile or that last yard. So, so yes, I think you need to do both. Um, And, you know, we would argue that the people that we're trying to engage, the audience that uh, around which we, we are trying to center everything, you know, back to that original definition of marketing, well, how different are they? How different is an employee and a customer? The same people, but the same, you know, it's the same person, right? So um, the, my motivations as a human being don't dissipate, disappear. Um, uh, is that, have you caught the new show Severance? Which isn't about, it was exactly about this point right, where I, I turn off my personal life when I go to work and I turn off my working life. But that doesn't happen. Um, we, we, we carry one thing into, into another and the way that we, um, perhaps uh, respond to a particular direction in our working life is driven mostly by who, who, who we are as humans. Um, I, I talk about, you know, employees as internal customers. Mm. And the, it doesn't matter what job you have or level of education or experience that you have. Everybody is an, is an incredibly adept customer, highly cultured consumer. They, everybody is, is re, on the receiving end of the best messaging and communications that this world that the creatives and the and, and and leaders of this world can actually come up with and we disseminate that almost you know without thinking you know my 12 year old it's entirely sub, subconscious i think you know, 99 percent they just sweep things away and they're doing the same thing with your uh, corporate messaging only we're not applying ourselves in the same way that we do on the outside world because um when we think of customers we you know we're, we're always taught 101 in in uh, external marketing is, um, forgive my language, no one gives a shit. You know, they are, um, you know, they're busy, apathetic, um, and, you know, you're trying to find a little moment in their day where they will turn their attention to you willingly. That's, that's what you're trying to win. What's the difference with employees? You can pay them to show up, but you can't pay them to, um, you know, to, to care. The same, you know, so if the, the one of the main jobs of this marketing, you know, centricity and uh, uh, that we're talking about is to actually engender caring, create belief and making people care is really, really hard. Mm-hmm. The same goes for employees. Most employees don't care <laughs> the way that you think they do. Right. Because a paycheck doesn't necessarily equal belief. It mostly just equals attendance. So I think the job of what we you know, when we're use, using marketing to, to get to, to, to create better employee experiences is, is, is not about making them, People show up. That's what the paycheck does. It's about um, creating caring, belief, so that you unlock all those other good things that humans bring to work: passion, creativity, collaboration, relationship building, all of the good stuff that actually makes an, a good a good employee experience. So, so you you're a uh, Neil, you're a humanistic reformed marketer whom has. <laughs> yes. Um, a lens on both the customer and the employee. So uh, riddle me this, my friend. Why is it then that do does sales and marketing teams or the unit or the organization get so fixated on things like CSAT or MPS in particular, and then HR gets so fixated on you know the employee engagement score? 
Yeah, wouldn't it be best to sort of almost unite the clans if you're a Braveheart fan and to say, hey, if if we're going to put customers first, we better put employees first. And if we put employees first, does that not reason to stand that maybe our customers ought to be put first as well? Like, how, how is it not uh, a union of sorts Yes. when we're kind of thinking this through? Like, again, over to you. Well, yeah. And, and you asked that, you know, that you mentioned the, the, the HR and marketing sort of relationship and, you know, if you look around the, the room there, um, in a, in a, let's take a, a, a C-level, you know, leadership team. The, there's no one whose job truly is the, the health and happiness and care of, of, of the employees. A, a, an HR leader is often more um, driven to compliance. I'm not saying that, that you know, they come in with that, perhaps that mindset, but the role of HR, the responsibilities tend to be more, more compliance-based. The, the CMO and the marketing leader yeah, it is definitely in the in the business of, of of generating that that caring, but with people on the outside. And I think the two could learn something good from each other. Um, and, and yeah, you know, the um, if you take those metrics that you mentioned, so you know, MPS Net Promoter Score, like, how much would you recommend this to other people? It's kind of interesting. And and there's, there is ENPS, which I, I've heard from you know people like Delta Airlines, for example, at the end of the call. Is it if you own the customer service company, is this somebody that you would employ? Which is a leap for most people, <laughs> you know, like, well, if I owned a customer service company, wow. Um, but, but yes, it, it, it is a, um, you know, at least it's leaning in that, in that area, the employee engagement surveys that you mentioned, you know, they obviously they're, they're, they're all different, but what seems to be common amongst them is how in, they're asking questions to try and determine how engaged employees are around the strategy and mission of the company. Well, I think that's the wrong question. The question is, is, is how much is the company looking after its its people? And those those there's a slightly different angle that you're coming at. So um, that's where I think that the unification could come. It is you know how happy are I'm using the word happy by the way as, as a uh, as a moniker for for probably a lot more words. But let's let's just take that uh, and and to, just to make it simple, how happy are our people? Is a great question. And and who are our people? Are there people who buy our products and the people who make them, the people who use our services and the people who deliver them. You know, and so if, if one is happy and one is not, the, ch- the chances are, you know, if the customer is happy, but the employee is not, the chances are that the customer is going to get less happy because the employee experience that, that is driving that service will diminish. Um, you know, but so, you know, looking at one should determine what happens with the other. And so looking at them both together, I think is, is really interesting. I, we, we've, we've, not, you know, kind of hypothesized about the humanity division inside companies before where, you know, the, you have a group that are looking after the, um, the insight, the understanding, the engagement and the retention, not a great word, but I'll use it, um, of the people that make the company work, customers and employees. And I think that's kind of such an interesting uh, concept to play with. Um, probably the 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 most um easiest step for most companies to make is just to think about the unification of ex and cx rather than the unification of the departments how do you when you're developing a new brand marketing campaign or launching a new product how do you bake in the role of the employee and employee experience in Mm. delivering on that and I'm, i'm seeing shoots of that you know we've been doing this now for five years or so and in in the early days um, there was a definite sort of light bulb moment when we talk about this stuff. Now it's more, yeah, you know, we, we see that we can't just say something without making sure that we can deliver on that on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis in ev- through every interaction and touch point. Um, I, I will say, I, um, somebody told me, and I have to find this study to make sure I back it up, so take this with a little pinch of salt, that customer service is now the... Uh, greatest single driver of brand value. So think about that. If you're a brand, you know, chief brand officer or a brand, you know, leading a brand or an agency, uh, developing um, advertising and, and, and communications for brands, everything that you say, um, everything that you, that you design into your packaging or build into, into your uh, messaging or your, you know, experiences, digital or physical is not as powerful as the, interaction that a customer or potential customer has with, with, the, with another human being who represents that company 
And chances are, particularly if you're you know, on the front line of building brand, you haven't spoken to those employees. You don't really maybe know who they are or where they are or what they're doing. Um, you haven't been able to provide them with maybe what they need in order to deliver that service in the way that ladders up to the promise that you're making. And I think that closing that gap would be um, incredible. And it's something that, that I wish I'd have done in my consumer marketing career, um, which is why we're doing it now. You know? Well, the, and the residual positive effect, of course, is both the word of mouth and word of finger tap that said employee or by, by association, obviously, through the purchase, the customer has with that brand and that thus that organization to pass it on, to pay it forward, to uh, anoint the service or product in a way yeah. that is filled with goodness and purpose. Or, and- or destroy it <laughs> <laughs> or dis- with, with said, said same finger, right? I mean, that's, that's how it works, yeah. Well, I, I love your point of intersection, right? Intersection of the customer, which by association, I suppose, is the organization, right? There's there, as Drucker said, you know, the, the, the single purpose of an organization is to gain and keep a customer. Uh, but then the intersection, of course, with the employee, like I'm looking at a two by two matrix basically and saying, okay, well, if up in the top right-hand quadrant, you know, if the, if the Y axis is the organization or the customers and the X axis is, uh, is the team member, well, up in the top right-hand quadrant, when you want a highly functioning organization full of purpose, great mm-hmm. culture, as well as a highly functioning <laughs> full of purpose team member, and thus like demonstrating artistry and, and blooming, if you will, like being happy, yeah. eudaimonic, uh, because the opposite, of course, in the bottom left-hand corner is the organization sucks, customers are unhappy, and the employees uh, like want to stick a, an ice pick into their eye because it's just so <laughs> awful where they work. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I, I I love the the how you're framing that. I mean, what we what we find generally is most companies they're not um, they're not empty. They're not an empty empty shell with no mission or purpose. But that mission or purpose or values tend to be deeply understood by a few, and then very very lightly understood or uh, or worse, um, kind of misunderstood by the mass. You know, the, the idea of, of cultural dilution is, is kind of interesting here where you we built it at the center. And then we, as we drag it out to the edges, it, it just dilutes to the point of, you know, has nothing in it by the time you get you get out there or you're saying this, but I don't see it. And, you know, the uh, people remember um, not what you say, but how you made them feel. Right. Which is not something that's, that's something that we've talked about before. And I know that, you know, um, it's a truth from someone smarter than I, but um, we need to create that feeling with employees. You can say it at the center, but they need to feel it at the edges. And when I say the edges, I'm talking about the front line, you know, where mm-hmm. you're, you're there in the head office, you know, shielded from day-to-day customer interactions, but there are thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of your people out there dealing with customers on a daily basis, you know, checking in bags for a flight or delivering packages or whatever it might be, you know? So if they can't feel the things that you're saying happening, and they also, if they can't see their role in it, if your vision is um, so hard to decode, Mm -hmm. you know, which therefore it requires a, you know, a, a MBA level PowerPoint presentation to unpack and then you're not really, you're not really winning. And a lot of the work we do actually is, is the, I'll, I'll call it translation. We translate deep theory into accessible uh, experience. You know, so when you when we when we have defined this, we say this. We actually want people to feel this, and and it gets simpler as it goes down that that chain. Um, I think that's that's the. I don't think um, often com- companies don't set out on the on the the path to create empty vessels. They do set out to ha- to, to create meaning and purpose. It just doesn't tend to permeate very far outside of the center. Um, and and that, that I've seen in, in young and old companies, in, in companies in every sector. You know, they, they, uh, it, it, travels to, uh, it travels through the room I'm in, perhaps to the next room. But um, outside of that, it's kind of on its own. 
Uh, you're uh, you're alluding to the great Maya Angelou, who who once wrote, of course. Of course. Uh, yes. You know, uh, people may not remember what you say, but they'll definitely remember how you made them feel. Made them feel That's good. exactly it. Uh, my penultimate question, sorry, before we get to finding out more about you and where where and what local is up to. Uh, you once wrote, um, there are two kinds of people, those who are in sales and those <laughs> in denial. Don't be in <laughs> denial. You're in sales. Go sell it every day. What's it, Neil? It's, it's great. I, I'm, it's, a, it's a lovely quote. It's not mine. I uh, borrowed it uh, with permission from uh, a great friend and um, incredible sort of growth leader, uh, Andy Elwood. So, Andy, if you see this, that's... Uh, my yeah. hat tip because I've uh, great humility. I've di- well done. Yeah, I've been dining out on that quote for a while. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think it's it's it. I think most people that um, don't work specifically in marketing, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm using sales as it's it. I, I, my my uh, riff on it is everyone's in marketing. It's like, that's kind of where I'm going, right? Yeah. If you don't have it in your title, then it's not for you. Um, and I think it's everybody's job to take the thing that they're working on and help others understand it. Mm -hmm. And the way that you can help others understand it is by putting those others, those uh, potential users of it, or at least supporters, or, you know, those who are participatory in it in some way at the center of of, of what you're creating. So you don't just create it for a few, it actually can be understood, cared for, um, you know, believed in by, by many. And so if you are an HR leader, I think it is part of your role to market what you're doing to employees and, and therefore to take it from your language and put it into their language, to take it from um, the return to you and reframe it in the return to them. Mm. What does it mean for me? What's in it for me? That's what people want to understand. When, you know, when I, if I roll out this new piece of technology for performance management, payroll benefits, for example, we've done a bunch of these. So, um, if you're gonna, if I'm gonna take my time to stop using one platform, which I kind of understand, and start using another one, it'd be better if I cared about the reasons for that and understood that if I start using this other one, it actually helps the company, mm-hmm. the people around me, and me. Um, you know, and, and I think that there are ways that that you can you can do that very easily. That um, it can, in from an individual standpoint, it can help uh, me grow in my career. It can help me be more productive or. Um, you know, or, or get that next step that I'm looking for. And by the way, if I take, you know, I mentioned the UPS drivers before, I don't think that every, every UPS delivery driver actually wants to be the VP of logistics. You know, I, I think that they, but everybody wants to grow to, uh, to get a better route, to, to, you know, get a better paycheck, to, um, to take on responsibility or, or foster more impact in some way, right? So, um, so if you can kind of, frame that for them they're more likely to do the thing you need them to do which is to log in and use the platform (laughs) because otherwise you just invested a bunch of money in an empty empty shell because without their data and and interaction it doesn't it doesn't deliver the value for the company so it's kind of a harmonious you know deal here to be made um so yeah i I think that's um that's that's what i mean is it you everyone can be you know everyone could be and should be a marketer as part of their role um, because it's going to help them as well as um, it's going to help them be understood. It's going to help them uh, achieve their goals because there's very few people inside of a company that either creating, managing or leading something where they don't need others to be involved. Mm-hmm. You know, we, whatever it is we're doing, it's better if the um, other employees, other team members, other peers or colleagues embrace it, recognize it, use it, support it. Right? So that's, that's what I mean. Um, it's a it's a wonderful confluence or mashup, I suppose, of another guest here of the Leadership Now series, Dan mm-hmm. Pink, and his yeah. one of his books, Drive, where you're getting at mastery, autonomy, and purpose. With, of course, to sell as human, uh, another of his great books, and you're like putting them together and saying, "Hey, that's where we can meet in the middle." <laughs> yeah, that's it. it. It's this stuff is it, it it's out there, but some incredibly smart thinkers thinking about it. What we're trying to do is to put together some of these pieces. Uh, and make it accessible and usable. Um, you know, as we we want to we want to be there actually helping uh, change the way, improve the uh, opportunities for front, say folks on the front line by helping them understand what the company wants them to do and why it matters for them, um, and and helping them grab it and run with it rather than sort of either fight it, resist it, or worse, 
just sort of let it fly by them because it, it doesn't look it doesn't make any clear sense to them. So uh, last question in your words, what is local? How can we find out more information about what you're up to, my friend? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, local, we are, um, you mentioned it at the top of the, the, the discussion, a change marketing company. So we are uh, a part consultant, part agency, but we really just work on problems of change inside large, complex organizations. We use our marketing skills. So from, you know, every different area of um, marketing or, you know, across the US and around the world and apply them to employees. So if you're rolling out a new piece of technology, our job is to package position and market that to everybody in the company so they use it. Um, if you are rolling out new vision or values or perhaps a brand promise, our job is to translate that into um, new ways for employees to understand it and then perhaps adopt new behaviors to bring it to life. Um, all taking that philosophy of employees at the center. So um, just like in my marketing world, I care most about the customers. We know I just care most about the employees. So um, we are uh, on LinkedIn, local, uh, local and local industries, and you can find us online, localindustries.com. Uh, and uh, if anybody is sort of either working in this space or interested in this space, we'd love to hear from you. And, and uh, I guess the, the plug I want to, I want to give is, um, we're not just building programs now for large companies, sort of, you know, for HR leaders, communications leaders, transformation leaders. Um, we've also uh, distilled what we do into a training program so that anybody can actually take on uh, marketing skills and bring them into their job. So uh, it's the Change Marketing University and it's rolling out uh, over the next couple of months. So uh, you can hit us up on, on the website, localindustries.com, and um, we'll have some... Uh, some new change marketers coming out of that that course uh, over the next well few years i hope man i love it neil a man of the people a man for the people uh <laughs> it's Gosh. wonderful to catch up with you thanks for all of this uh just fantastic folks uh neil bedwell of local uh wonderful uh unmarketing leader uh doing it differently uh thanks again for joining today leadership now with me dan pontybrack <laughs>